leaf sepatora fungi versus botrytis, aka bud rot, or is it manganese or calcium? You're here with Mark Batwell at perfectgardens.com. Please remember to like, share, and subscribe. It's always helpful with the YouTube. I always appreciate all your support, guys, especially around this video. All right, so now we're going to get into some pictures, and I want to, I'm going to keep referencing them back and forth, back and forth, because once you see it, you're going to get it. But it's important to actually see many pictures to kind of realize, like, oh, and then at the very end of this, we're going to do a comparison. Comparison. So right here it says necrotic spots develop on several affected leaves which become pale and fall off. Okay, so that's what I want to be clear on. Spots, dead spots, pale and fall off. When it's in excess, younger and newer growth develops chronic dark orange to dark rusty brown molting on the leaves. Okay, so as you can see right here, you can see the spotting, how this is happening. And this is, again, this is just one plant. This type of similar stuff starts to appear in, in different ways on the plant. And remember, when you're using a synthetic nutrients, these synthetic nutrients are designed to keep your plants looking green. So it's very easy for you to have a deficiency, but your plant still looks green. I know that might might sound a little crazy, but it's chemistry, and that's what these chemists are doing. They're tricking the plant, and when they do that, we're not able to see what's really going on. Okay, so calcium. Calcium is for cell walls and cell membranes. Significant thing is it's an immobile nutrient, right? So you're going to look to the newer leaves. Why are you going to look to the newer leaves? That's because calcium is needed as the plant is growing. So as it's getting taller, as the leaves are going from small to big, it needs calcium to develop its cell structure. Manganese is a semi-mobile nutrient, right? It's needed through the entire growing process, flowering process, because it's aiding in over 300 enzyme reactions. And like what we talked about, it's splitting the light for photosynthesis. So photosynthesis happens through the entire time. So you're going to need magnesium through the entire time. It's important to think about when the plants need these minerals, because if you think about when these plants need the minerals, when certain deficiencies pop up that look very similar, you're going to be able to sit back and think, okay, what stage is the plant in? Okay. I know the plant needs these things during these times. Okay, something doesn't really add up. And then you're able to dig a little deeper versus misdiagnose the problem. If you need an organic form of calcium, check out things like oyster seashells, bone meal, limestone, gypsum, stuff like that. A synthetic calcium that I approve of is the calcium nitrate. Other calciums like calcium glycoheptanate will do nothing for you really. Okay, so let's go and show what calcium is. Calcium is a yellowish brown irregular spot developed on the leaves. So as you can see right here, it's an irregular spot. So as you, it's kind of blotchy in different directions. I'm going to zoom up on these in a little bit. All right, so once again, you're seeing another manganese and you're seeing the spots happen. And once again, if you're using a nutrient that line that is designed to keep your plants looking green, at times these other underlying deficiencies like this won't appear. That is an opinion. I'm just telling you flat out, that's my opinion. Although when I go through my list of what these things should look like and I go through my checklist, manganese is the closest one that appears to. And and on the channel, there was so many different opinions, even in just a few hours. Okay, so I'm going to go another one. So here's a little bit closer look at the leaf. So right here, pale and fall off. So right here, as you zoom in, does it look like this portion is pale, right? Does it kind of, this one's a little brownish, and then this one starts to look a little pale. So I'm going to go a little further, another leaf. You can see the overall plant. And so what does it mean by newer leaves and older leaves? Well, these are going to be the older leaves down here. These are going to be the newer leaves up here. The flower is going to be the newest part of the plant. These leaves are going to be the oldest part of this part of the plant, if that makes sense. So when it says older and newer, you have to think about specifically what are we referencing on the position of the plant? Because we, as we get into boron, that also plays a role. And you'll, you'll, it'll make sense when I get into that one later down the road. Road. Once again, seeing the pictures. Okay, so right here. Now we're doing the side by side comparison. I think this is where it really starts to pop out. So as you can see, the little splotching right here. It's little dots, just like what we what we were referencing before. Spots and paleness, right? So you can see the paleness right here. But this one's the calcium. The calcium is darker and it's more more splotchy around. It really like taking up the whole section of leaf. I know this one's a little more advanced, 
but even in, and I'm including one that's not so advanced, but you can see how it's kind of just taking up the whole section of right here. Like it's it, it's not a little dots in a sense. And then this one right here is the sepatora, and you can see it's a fungi. So if you can put your hands on it and rub it, and it looks like fur and it's coming off, you're most likely dealing with some type of living organism. Fungi is a decomposer. It's going to decompose, and this is what it looks like. You can see right here, it's like more of a dark or furry or black and then once again here's the botrytis remember to also check out our new membership where i release tons of new content weeks if not months early and i give all your questions you post and guarantee that i'll get a reply back to you in the last few days if you have just been recently seen i've been posting quite a bit on the community forum right here i guess i'm just trying to get more familiar with the whole youtube thing and see what's more available out there and this few little pool ended up creating a couple more videos right end up having a, a very interesting deficiency and through this process besides guessing on the poll on the mineral deficiencies which also i'm just kind of talking about this for the rest of the channel anyone that doesn't know i'm starting to do this so hopefully i'll be posting on a daily basis pictures and other things that i think will make us all better growers this also lets me get around the youtube algorithm a little bit and lets me get more in depth with what i want to do and how i want to post on the channel without worrying too much about being demonetized or getting my channel removed. In our previous video, I actually got into manganese versus calcium and I actually already told you what the problem was. It, this, we're dealing with the manganese deficiency. Although some of the other guesses were sepatora and botrytis. And that made me think if a couple people are suggesting these, then that's what they're seeing on their plant and they could be misdiagnosing the problem. And if you misdiagnose it, it ends up sending you back on identifying the problem so you can properly create a solution so right here a b c d one of these is sepatora the other one's botrytis another one's a calcium deficiency and the other one is a manganese deficiency let's go ahead and get into this video real quick and talk about all these things and then get into more pictures in the end and tell you what they are and, and show you detail by detail what i see and again i could be wrong right opinions are like assholes i say it all the time i can be 100 wrong and i will make another video if someone can present something to me I will make another video being humble and saying listen guys I think I'm wrong whenever I see a problem within one of my clients I go back to my own checklist the things I've created over my time to identify problems and keep going back to it every time because it's hard for me to remember this stuff I love at the end of the day going back I really actually just use YouTube as a sector of my own brain right because I'm always wanting to go back and double check just to make sure you know am I going crazy so one of the most recent videos I talked about was fungi 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 and in that video I would talk about there are two types of fungi there's a decomposers and then there are the mycorrhizae. Sepatora is a decomposer. The type of fungi species is Sepatora lycopersicae. Apologize on that. Let's get real quick into how to solve this problem because I can almost guarantee a lot of you guys will be running into the issue. I see it every year and this will actually lead into botrytis. One fungi can lead into another fungi. So first thing, remove infected foliage, right? We've already talked about the video trimming at the bottom one third. I created a number of videos after that about trimming and the whole language behind it. There's probably over like 500 opinions on that post ranging from you'll know what you're talking about all the way to love the video. Highly recommend go checking it out and read the other comments read what the other growers are doing right it, one of the best things you can ever do is become familiar and comfortable and forgiving to yourself if you do something a lot of times you only have a couple plants you do something and you're like oh man i shouldn't have done that and you start beating yourself up versus paying attention to the plant and realizing that there's a thousand different ways to paint a painting right now on this channel i'm just providing the way i painted a painting in the last 13 years right that's just my narrow perspective go watch other channels listen to their perspectives as well i highly encourage him i actually recently just did a video with mr grow it it came out really well i think i just want to say thank you to a lot of you guys you guys reached out to him to do an interview and i just don't think about that stuff i just want to answer one question at a time so i want to say thank you all of you guys for that as well so second thing to do is improve air circulation once again talked about a lot of videos about improving the air circulation trimming the bottom of a third you want to do that for indoor growing more than any 
anything else uh, not really for outdoor if you have one or two plants and you have a small growing environment or maybe you're growing next to a fence or you're trying to hide a couple things you might want to use some of these types of techniques to bring help bring in the harvest but overall these types of techniques are mainly for indoor growers and it's really honestly again thinking about where the industry was 40 years ago 30 20 10 5 and present day obviously nowadays a lot of people are getting brave they put it right into apartment complexes so the type of equipment that are being produced and manufactured is being more tailored to the home grower nowadays than in a sense like industrial big ag which was where all this technology was years ago with hid systems and so on i mean come on think about it guys just 20 years ago all the fans were stand-up fans big old honkers i mean if you could think about having a little clip-on fan years ago that i mean that was pretty like new technology shit so the industry and our whole world has definitely evolved quite a bit i don't know if i want to use the word evolved next thing is to avoid moisture right recently just released a video from my last year's grow where eight inches of snowfall happened early september right after that i started getting an infestation with white flies and spider mites and some pm right there are four and a half weeks into flowering one of the worst times to start to get a bug infestation these types of things happen though and that's why if you're attentive to your plants you'll be able to still bring in a harvest next thing if you're growing outdoors is put down mulch fungi's relationship is with minerals soil and plants keep decomposers on the ground not on your plants Remove weeds such as nightshade and horse nettles. They are common hosts for these types of fungi. Keep track of temperature and humidity. Apply fungicides or natural oils if you want to. Again, you know, to each is their own. Banish is the product that I actually am supporting. I'm obviously always looking for other products in line with my values. If you haven't checked out our video on Smite and Banish, I highly recommend it do so. They are on our approved vendor list, and obviously you can get it here at perfectgardens.com. Just come to grow essentials, come down to pest control, and you'll find it right there. Botrytis is also a decomposer fungi. It is called the Botrytis signorella. Same exact solution as before, pretty much. Once you get Botrytis, it's, it's kind of over. You kind of really just want to cut it out. I would probably would cut down two to four inches below that stem. At the end of the day, the Botrytis is growing on the plant, right? So it's going to be very clear what the where the Botrytis is and where it stops. Obviously, you don't want to crack it open and then let the fungi spores just fly out. But at the end of the day, don't be afraid to look at the Botrytis and make sure to properly cut all of it out of your plant and then next get some hydrogen peroxide and spray down the tops of those plants while at the same time not allowing any of those spores to infect the rest of your room botrytis really isn't actually a big deal it just degrades that one flower yeah if you let it go of course it's going to destroy your crop if you're not staying on top of your environmental conditions that's horrible next let's talk real fast about manganese but i just want to add in a couple small things and we'll talk about this later on in other videos manganese is significant because it aids in more than 300 enzyme reactions. Although, how does it do that, right? How does such a small trace mineral play such a large role? And it does all that role specifically in the photosynthesis 2 period. So there's the photosynthesis 1 and the photosynthesis 2 period, and we'll get into these in other videos. Specifically in the photosynthesis 2 period is the water oxidizing system. It has to have an absolute magnesium requirement to function. And that's absolutely important when you kind of, we always talk about the law of minimum and law of tolerance all the time. Time. Just misspelled that right there, no big deal. And this, once again, plays a large role, right? It has to have an absolute certain amount of magnesium to function. Magnesium facilitates the photoanalysis, the light splitting. I mean, that's huge. That's significant, guys. One day when it when that hits you, you're going to be like, wow. Magnesium facilitates the photoanalysis, the light splitting of water molecules and provides energy for photosynthesis. In other videos, I'm always talking about music and stuff. In past videos, I talk about how magnesium captures the light. And what is light? Light is harmonic frequency. So magnesium is the receiver. And I'm just trying to say this in different ways so that it becomes significant to you. Because once you understand how significant trace minerals are, specifically amino acids, peptides, and proteins, when you start to understand the significance of those things and the building blocks, and I hate to be so cliche by saying the building blocks of life, but it, it really is the best way to say it. It's the building blocks of life. Once you understand that how magnesium plays the role and how it, it actually splits the lights, the frequencies. 
the splitting of those frequencies is the first signal to create different types of amino acids and peptide chains. I'm going to say that one more time, guys. The splitting of that light is the, in a sense, like one of the first moments, the first instructions, in a sense, to, to start creating these very basic amino acids and peptide chains. From there, DNA code stored in the leaves begin to bind to other trace minerals, form other protein chains, and start to do other functions. Manganese is a semi-mobile nutrient, so it can appear in more in the first in the newer leaves than it's going to appear in the older leaves. Sorry, this video was so so long guys this is why i include the introduction and all the step by step so you can just skip along and you don't even have to listen to me ramble about these subjects generally the only reason why i do ramble guys is because you're only listening to my own thoughts and my own conversations i'm having as i'm interpreting information and through those thoughts i come to my own small realizations which i'm able to implement in my own way thank you so much please remember to like share and subscribe have a great day and I remember him bringing up bricks was because I asked him a question. I was like, so how do you actually know when to harvest the grapes? He then went in to go tell me about how a lot of farmers will just grow the grapes, but they won't do the fermentation process. And he told me about the bricks process because it's a way of measuring the amount of sugars in the grapes.